The top political parties in Edo State are gradually laying necessary foundations for the governorship election as the month of September draws near. By the end of February, all political parties will have conducted their party primaries to select the official flag bearers. All attention, my view on the ruling People's Democratic Party as the incumbent Governor Godwin Obaseki will be hoping that his party wins in September. But opposition parties like the All Progressive Congress and the Labour Party will be looking to cause a major upset to upseat the ruling party. One of the governorship aspirants running under the Labour Party, Oluride Apata, who declared his intention last year, said he decided to step into the gubernatorial ring because of his interest in the people's welfare. The LP aspirant also stated that his decision to aspire for the number one seat on the platform of the party was because the only party that is people-oriented is the Labour Party, I should say. So joining us now on the morning show to discuss his ambition to govern and his chances to get the governorship ticket in the Labour Party to Lumi Diak, but a governorship aspirant of the Labour Party in Edo State. In your former, good to have you. Uh, good morning. Good, to see you. good morning. Nice. Thank you for having me. And in your former life, I knew you used to be MBA president. And yes, and, so in, uh, my, in my previous incarnation. In your previous incarnation, <laughs> but now this is a new incarnation. Yes. Let's go straight to it. I have a lot of concerns with the party you're running from. You guys recently came out to say the party nomination is high. And it's for the Labour Party. At first, why should it be that high? And a lot of accusations have been going to this abure led Labour Party of a lot of corruption here and there. You know, we've seen many cases as regards under the leadership of Abure and the Labour Party, you know, candidates, affairs here and there, you know, court cases, the La Media Papa scenario and all of that. A lot of people are having jitters as regards to this. What is really happening in the Labour Party? Thank you, Rufai. I, I think there is indeed cause for concern. Uh, I will be the first to admit uh, a house divided against itself really cannot stand. And um, I hesitate to comment on a lot of the issues because many of these issues predate my entry into the party. Uh, I am gobsmacked by some of the stuff I am also reading because... This is stuff I wasn't aware of even before I joined the party. But let's deal with the issue of nomination fault. The Labour Party has come out to announce for Edo primaries, or for Edo uh, primaries, yes, that um, expression of interest forms will cost five million, and uh, and the actual nomination form itself will cost twenty-five million, so totaling thirty million. They, uh, for, for the ladies, they have asked them not to bother with the five million, but to go and pay twenty-five million. So there was uh, an outcry, understandably, uh, by quite a number, from quite a number of people. And um, some of us aspirants met, and I, I had to agree with the view that it was, it was uh, prohibitive, astronomical, it was too high, the numbers. And indeed, I, I, I put my name to, uh, to a, a, a note that was sent out to that effect. Uh, the party has come back to say that there, theirs is the cheapest ticket in town and that the other parties are much higher, are asking for much higher. Uh, I don't buy that argument. Quite a number of us don't buy it. And, um, but it's, it's, it, it's, a, it's a continuing engagement. Um, and the truth of the matter is that if you want to be in the game, you must play by the rules. Uh, in Bayelsa, same scenario played out. Uh, initially, it was put at 25 million. There was protest like this. Eventually, it was brought, brought down to 15. I hope, I hope those of us who quarrel with the numbers uh, with the fees. Our hope is that uh, we have a party that will listen to the majority of, uh, of the views and, uh, and hopefully give some kind of concession. Uh, but you can't play from outside. So my view, my pragmatic view, and that I have advised my uh, colleagues is this, uh, whatever it may be, you have to be a participant. You have to go in there and uh, buy the forms and continue to push for some kind of concession. Uh, the guy, uh, Udengs, who ran in, uh, uh, in Bayelsa, right now he's being owed 10 million naira by the party as a result of the uh, concession that was made. So my hope is that... Uh, so, sorry to ask you, has your party filed their returns to INEC as regards how election money, presidential, and all of the donations were spent? Have they filed their books? And what is this <coughs> talk? Sorry, sorry, I had to ask it. What is this talk about... Labour Party ticket being sold to the highest bidder in connection with, you know, the incumbent party in the state. <clears throat> you know, Rufai, you referred to my previous incarnation, my former life. I'm a lawyer. Uh, facts are sacred. I have to deal with the facts and what I know. 
being an aspirant does not make me an official of the party. You know what I mean? So I don't know if they have filed their returns at INEC regarding how uh, donations have been uh, administered. Um, I have heard in the public space uh, about accusations and counter-accusations. I watched on your program yesterday yet another spectacle that I thought we really could do without as a party. But my consolation is that uh, this is the party of Peter Obi. That's my consolation. That is... Um, and also I, the party of Julius Abure, uh, as a chairman. Of the party. As a chairman. But I mention our presidential candidate because if there's anything we know him for is that he would ensure that the right thing is done. Uh, Julius Abure is our chairman, but uh, one cannot deny the fact that Peter Obi is a leader in the party. And I am hoping that whatever these issues are, like I said, they predate my entry into the party. I am hoping that the right thing will be done and, um, and uh, so that we can very, very quickly walk away from what is fast becoming a, a, uh, a spectacle. You know what I mean? Uh, because we can, we can do without it. The party of Peter Obi can do without uh, this, kind of, uh, this so, kind of issues. It's, it's curious that you call it the party of Peter Obi. So would you say, number one, I don't know, um, some people might not agree with that statement right away. I don't know if, um, if you would be offending people by saying that it's the party of Peter Obi. Should I rephrase? The party Peter Obi belongs to. <laughs> <laughs> All right, okay, so let me come to um, the question around, I mean, you talked about in, in a different forum, the reason of cho why you chose the Labour Party. What we often talk about on the show here is your ideological leanings in terms of believing in the ideals of the Labour Party. Because when you talk about the fact that you didn't know about all these things, you know, because it predated your time on, in the party, then I would wonder if you checked out the parties, you know, when you were going around shopping for which platform to run on, what was the attraction? And then did you not see any of these things, ask about whether they filed their, um, you know, their documents or everything, that, if they were transparent, if they were open, if they filed it with, you know, to INEC? I would assume, as a lawyer, like you mentioned, you'd have done due diligence to ensure that this was a party that aligned with your beliefs and the things that you stand for. So I'd like you to ask them um, response. But beyond that is also the fact that you have a tough, um, a tough uh, what some people would call a tough race ahead of you, mm. I mean, by all standards, mm. you know, once you clean the, if you in the party's ticket, then you're going to be facing, you know, people like, uh, well, depending on who the PDP decides on. But that's the incumbent, and people have talked about the incumbent factor. Yes, the Labour Party did quite well in those states for the presidential elections, the Peter Obi effect, like you mentioned. Mm -hmm. But how do you hope to break that PDP stronghold? Mm. in Edo State. Well, first, the first question as to due diligence, mm -hmm. the choice of the party, all these issues that are coming up. Are you not, if you say you're not aware of it, did you not mm -hmm. check around before deciding to settle with the Labour Party? I have no regrets whatsoever uh, joining the Labour Party. Uh, due diligence, you, you, due diligence for me stopped at what does the party believe in? Due diligence stops at ideology. Due diligence stops at posturing. What is the party's posture? And I was looking for a party that would help bring the people back into the equation. In politics and governance in Nigeria today, people have been removed from the equation. It is no longer about the people. That is why I have stepped up. And when I looked around, the only platform that commended itself to me that seemed to be interested in what the people want and say and do was the Labour Party, and no regrets. That remains the case. Now, how they have sorted out their internal administrative uh, uh, workings, how all of that has been done, uh, that boils down to the individuals that superintend the running of the party and how they have done it up until now. I dare say, and I beg to say that, uh, submit that, uh, it is not incumbent on me or any other aspirant to begin to check to see uh, whether T's were crossed, I's were dotted with regard to internal party workings. However, with regard to what the party stands for, I think now even more than ever before, the Labour Party is the only party that is interested in the lot of the Nigerian people. And that is why I had no hesitation at all in uh, joining up with the Labour Party because it has to be about the people. It has to be about what the people require. And um, when you have governance, uh, you have those who are the operators of the system, 
just doing everything else but dealing with the issues of the people. It, 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 it puts a, it, there's a bad taste in one's mouth. And that's why we have to step out and, uh, and be the voice of the voiceless and represent those who cannot represent themselves. So, but as with every other human organization, there are imperfections. And um, there are internal mechanisms in the Labour Party to deal with those imperfections. There's no perfect uh, scenario, no perfect setting. And so I have faith. That's why I say the party of Peter Obi or the party Peter Obi belongs to. I think at the end of the day, the right things will be done. You know, and uh, and uh, we will overcome whatever uh, bumps there are in the road no. on, our, on our path to uh, uh, success. Now, um, uh, the lay of the, the, the land or the way the field is looking at yes. the moment. Uh, uh, PDP, yes, PDP is, uh, APC. Uh, PDP is the incumbent uh, party or the party in power. Um, I don't think PDP has ever had it so bad as far as political fortunes are concerned particularly in Edo State. Uh, if you do a poll right now, you'll find out that they are the lowest ebb ever in uh, Edo State. And I don't think it has been this bad in any state. And so, uh, yes, Labour did well in the presidential elections. And Labour, uh, Edo continues to be a hotbed of the Labour Party. And the people are so eager, the Edo people, to see the back of PDP, to see them leave very quickly. Because if you go and take... Uh, the opinion of the, the man on the street, they have, they, they have been, they've been dealt a really bad hand in the last couple of years. And so if there was ever... Why do you say bad hand? What do you mean? Because I'm sure you... Governance. Also, so in, what would you say? As so, so let's put it this way. First and foremost, yeah. if, if there was ever a time that if there was any state that Labour Party could actually walk mm -hmm. or even waltz into the government house, it's a dual state. Because when I say they've been dealt a bad hand... Uh, I, I say that governance in Edo State, as defined by PDP, is helicopter governance. I say helicopter How governance, mean? I mean that literally and I mean that figuratively. Literally, I mean my governor actually flies to parts of the state in a helicopter because the roads are so bad that he cannot get there on time. So he flies in a helicopter. For me, that is such, that speaks volumes. In a state where the farthest distance ordinarily should be one hour, 30 minutes, why are you in a helicopter? Is, I think it's disgraceful, downright disgraceful. But then, when I say figuratively, when you have a government where your policies, your policies and the people are so far apart, the kind of policies you run that, as far as I'm concerned, nobody really has asked what do the people want. So when you have high-sounding, high-faluting uh, policies and uh, programs, have you really found out? You know, when people say, I don't know, be Lagos, I even heard, hear my incumbent governor the incumbent governor saying, I don't know, be Lagos. I don't even, I don't even under, think they understand what that means. It means that there are peculiarities in that jurisdiction. You can't transplant policies or programs that work elsewhere. So you must understand. And one thing about governance... So you're saying the governor is not in touch with the people? He is not. Totally removed. And one thing about governance is this. One attribute that is required is empathy. Compassion. Once that is removed, you really can't have governance. And so look, if you want specifics, I say to you, <clears throat> health care. Mama, uh, Mama Osayande wants to be able to walk to the nearest primary health care center and take Osayande for basic ailments. She doesn't need to go to Ubo or go to Saplay Road to go to the, to the uh, uh, central hospital. She wants to walk to the primary health care center. She is in urban market. She wants to be able to go to Mosoga and buy gari that she will sell. You can't get to Mosoga. I don't know if you know people where. I don't know if you know where Olubo is. I know, I know Olubo. I know Mosoga. You can't get past Olubo. Yeah. Rufai. Yeah, I know. It is the family budget that we are talking about. Her husband probably drives a, a station wagon. I grew up in Worry. Door to door, Worry to Bini was forty-seven minutes. Yeah. Door to door. But well, the road is gone now. It's gone. That guy who drives the station wagon was able to do three trips a day. Enough. That's the family budget. Destroyed. Torn. It's okay. what is it's the little okay. things. It's what is the okay. people. Okay. So the question will now be what are you going to do about bypass? How are you going to get the money to do it? What are you going to do about arterial roads in Benin City itself? About those areas? And how are you going to get the money? Because your, your state is in debt. This is a critical time. Also, secondly, you were talking about the fact that uh, people bring hyper-voluting ideas. The concerns against you has always been, you are a Lagos person too. 
Yeah, you grew up in worry. I mean, I'm a worry boy too, by extension. But ah, you be here. I be here now. Yeah, worry, <laughs> worry. Yeah, <laughs> DSC only amateur. Ah, okay. Yeah. So they've always said you two are a Lagos person. You mean Lagos lawyer and all of that? You know. Also, they are also saying that you don't have an identity of yours. That this your ticket is like a place that is stood for somebody else. What's your take about that? So, and so, also, let's also uh, talk about so four points. Okay. your 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 friend. I'm sure you, by extension, you have a relationship with Aswe Godalo, yes. you know, and the quest for Central. And you are from Obaseki's area. And they are saying, no, the, the zeitgeist now is that it should come from Central and Aswe Godalo and, you know, him flocking with the governor. Four points. Let yeah, me four try, points. If I, if I forget the, to remind you. No, me. the first one are the road. Mm. Roads. Bypass oh. road, all that Olubo road, most, you know. All where will friends. the money come from? Yeah, where will the money come from? Because so, there's so, debt on ground. And what will you do about so the debt? So, debt on ground, from what I hear, is over 500 billion naira. Mm. Unlike the numbers being bandied around by some, bandied around by some people, the debt, the reality is 500 billion. Mm. I have no problem with debt. That's, the, that's the, our reality. Credit is a reality in any organization. Mm. But the issue is what do you, when you borrow, what do you use the money for? Mm. Do you go and build a modular refinery where you can't even get feedstock to the modular? So we can talk about that later, but borrowing is okay. But do you realize aggregate, aggregate in Edo State, there's, there's an income of 14 billion every month. Aggregate. Rufa, you, you be area. If 14 billion show for any year, you go know. On a monthly basis, at least sustained for the last 12 months. 14 billion. When there is expect, a reasonable expectation of income, you can attract credit and use it for so roads. When Peter Obi was governor in Anambra State, he told me, what did he do? He organized the state along the, the senatorial zone, called a road construction company and said, listen, for the next 48 months, I will be in the saddle. Tell me how many kilometers of road can we fix? It's not rocket science. How we will do it? Arterial roads. You put it in. You have 14 billion naira. You apportion it. It's prioritizing your expenditure. What no, do you? But but not only roads. You use money. No, not they talk. No, they that? talk. You will use some money for roads. The roads that are critical. Now, policy must be people oriented. So I'm going to be very interested in roads that lead from the farm to the market, because I need produce to get out to the market, because I need. Uh, uh, the farmer to be able to sell, come back, plant. Those are, so we're going to deal with those kind of roads, right? You also have the arrangements that you can enter into with road construction companies that you will ensure, like they did in Anambra, like uh, Ebano did in Enugu. You have a system where you build a number of roads and they get paid. There's, you, you get paid over a certain period. They know that they will get their money over time. You know if you do all the roads in four years. But you prioritize. But for my problem is where they do, there's no intention at all to even fix the roads. Have you seen Adua recently? Every, just leaving Benin from any point is a nightmare. So start now. Where is Apple Road? I don't Where is Apple Road? road. Gov, you saw the governor's convoy stuck the other day. Not be a film trick. Not true. You understand what I mean? Uh, the other day, it, it took a tanker. Petrol-laden tanker tipping over in Olubo the, uh, the other day, killing the, the ensuing conflagration, killing hundreds of people. Or let me know, let me get my numbers right. Uh, quite a number of yeah, people, number of people no. right? I'm not sure about hundreds, right? And then I see the governors coming to say, "Oh, we com we commiserate with the family." Commiserate is literally medicine after death. Okay, so you say, so that was you number say, one. You you, you want you're, you're going to do you're going to do credit. Secondly, Asue Godalo phenomenon. Him being from the central, you being from where the governor is, people are saying, isn't it time for the uh, center? And secondly, they're saying you're not a man of your own, that probably mm -hmm. you're just, that you are, you are too close to Governor Baseki mm -hmm. to be running in this when he also has interest, that you are just there plus that's a place all that to make the race exciting. So uh, I, I'd rather not deal with personalities. So let's remove Aswe Gudalo, my elder brother, from the conversation and simply talk about zoning to Edo Central. <clears throat> I have no problem with zoning. It's a reality of life. Affirmative action uh, all over the world. In South Africa, after apartheid, you had the BEE, uh, the American Indians, the uh, Aborigines in uh, Australia. Even when I went to secondary school, we had quota system because uh, I, from Bender State, had to score over 90% to get to unity school. My contemporary from Niger could come in at 46. 
because he was considered to be educationally disadvantaged. The only thing I say about uh, zoning and affirmative action is that there must be a sunset clause. It shouldn't be open-ended. So now coming to Edo State, two things I will say. Number one, um, Labour Party is what the Yorubas call a shechede, right? We are just coming to the race. You pl place the blame at the doorstep of PDP and APC, the two dominant parties who have continued to pay lip service to the issue of zoning. They, they tout it when it comes to election cycle, and they drop it when, it's, when, when they're in power. 59% of the voting population in Edo are in Edo South, mostly Bini people. 20 plus percent are in Edo North. Edo Central is 15%. Politics has always been a game of numbers. So when you talk of affirmative action, Rufai, there must be the necessary engagement and consensus building that must be done so that you get the dominant group to agree that it is necessary for inclusivity for this thing to go around. They, they haven't. Those two parties have not done it. If they do it, would you accept to... No, this, you can't start that conversation today. Which brings me to my second point. Labour Party. We, first of all, you know that the three parties are not zoning. Because everybody has, come, everybody has realized that it won't work. So, Labour Party, we have to make pragmatic, hard decisions. If we want to, Labour Party is the party that performs superlatively in Edo South in the presidential elections. We have to make some hard decisions. Are we going to leave Edo South today where we produce one senator, two House of Reps members, one House of Assembly member and go to Edo Central and pick a governorship candidate? It is political suicide. There's some pragmatism that has to come to the table. So you have to sit down and say, okay, the other two parties have done badly as far as zoning is concerned. When we get in, we set the clock. And then you say, inclusivity is part of our policy or our ideology. It must, it must be fair and equitable. But you can't do it from the outside. You must be inside. And when you get in, you sit down and say, okay, we are not zoning. Olu Akbata is on the ticket. He's from Edo South. Mr. Lagbaja is on the ticket. He's from Edo North. Whoever, I don't want to call names, but we are all in the Labour Party lineup. We are from all zones. Once one person wins, if it's the Edo South man, we, we, set, we now set the clock running and say, okay, as a party, we believe in inclusivity. So after this, the next zone will take it, right? And not just mouthing it, we will have the conversations that are necessary. You and I know that there are states in this country where the dominant tribe, there's no conversation. It's not, it's not an issue. The dominant tribe has stayed in government house since I was a child, right? Okay. But we will lead the conversation and ensure that okay. we work towards that. So, you not being a man of yourself, in fact, you had to reply to this in newspaper. They said that you are here as a stooge for something, owing to the fact that you're very close to Governor Basaki. Yes, I've heard that. He's your that. brother, isn't it? He's, he's, he's my friend yeah. first. And my relative, senior okay. relative, so you're, right? Your relative. Oh, well, absolutely. There's no. Am I going to because of politics now mm. deny those who are my kids and kin? Mm. Impossible. But I've heard that. So short answer to the question, I, so that we don't. Uh, I am not accused of dodging the question. I am not a Baseki's agent, mole, representative, or anything of any sort. Eh? So head the big person kind cap. You understand what I mean? So. In 1979, my father's elder brother, he died in Oluwafemi Apata, was senator representing Bendel South, 79. His close cousin, Chief Tayo Apata, was chairman of MPN. Olu Apata represented UPN. Tayo Apata was in MPN. They had lunch every weekend. Was one the mold of the other. It's the kind of politics that we know how to play. You yeah. agree? You agree to? No, it's very important. I'm sorry. You yeah. agree to disagree. I totally disagree with Godwin Obaseki's style of government, even if I am his friend and his relative. How can I deny the fact that I'm related to him? But I can't tell you publicly. I totally disagree. There's no empathy. There's no compassion in his style of governance. And so we are not on the same page as far as it's concerned, which is why I have gone to the Labour Party, to seek to be the candidate of that party, to demonstrate to Gordon Obaseki, to the PDP, which is where he belongs today, and to the APC, where he was a couple of years ago, that they have gotten it totally wrong. So, you know, I can scream until I am blue in the face. People will believe what they want to believe. But by the fruits, you shall know them. 
You know what I mean? By my actions, by my utterances, I totally disagree. I think you go and do, do a Vox Pop, go to Benin. As far as, right. you, I want to ask you one question. Okay, Sorry. we're out of time now. One question. Yes, just one question. One question. Why is it such a problem to even be labeled as an Obaseki uh, agent? Would, was, uh, Biden was too eager to embrace Obama. If you go to Kigali today, any political aspirant would be very eager to embrace Paul Kagame. In Edo State, every bar, every market you go to, they say to you, why vote in El Obaseki Ogieri? What does that mean? Don't vote for him. Obaseki sent him. Why is the touch of Obaseki leprous? All right. Why? Well, thank you so much, Mr. Olimide Akpata, for your time this morning. Um, interesting conversation. I was hoping we could delve into your plans for the young people. I'm sure at a further date we would Invite talk me. about that.